So I just had my pro boxing debut. Fighting out of San Antonio, Texas, he is the AK guy, Let me catch you guys up to speed real quick. So six weeks ago, Keemstar calls me up and asks if I want to do an influencer boxing match. I, being a little bored and having a few screws loose, said yes, absolutely. There was only one problem. I'm not a boxer. In fact, I've never set foot in a boxing gym. Thankfully, I know a couple guys. So for the next five to six weeks, I cleaned up my act, cleaned up my diet, stopped drinking, and trained my ass off to learn the sport of boxing in way too short of a time frame. Most people don't take their first fight until about a year of training. So six weeks is the crash course that you take when you don't have enough time for the crash course. To top things off, my original opponent, who I didn't really think was going to be hard to beat, ended up failing medicals. So eight days before the fight, I got matched up with a new opponent, James Sellers, who basically looks like Mr. Beast, but with double the testosterone. I'm 5'10", James is 6'3". So he had a five inch height advantage on me, a seven inch reach advantage, and coming in with a very slight weight advantage. Meaning the only way I'd be able to beat him is if I actually paid attention during this crash course. So in my mind going in, I thought this was a very even fight. Another thing to note is that this was not your typical amateur boxing match. We were using no headgear like you typically have at an amateur match, and the gloves that we were using were the real deal 10 ounce gloves. So a lot of the padding removed. Like for sparring, you use 16 ounce gloves, which really are a lot of cushion on those, those blows. This was a real deal pro match that was regulated by the Tennessee Boxing Commission and everything. It's actually, once I learned that, it got a little bit intimidating. I just don't listen to what the crowd says. They're going to boo you, blah, 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 this and that. They're not going to get in there. I can guarantee you that. And remember, just learn from your mistakes, whether you win or lose. If you got any questions, speak up now. Feel it, you know. I'm not asking you to do anything overly skillful because he's not going to be that skillful. But if you make him feel that shit, you hit the body the way that you hit me. Yeah, bro, he's not going to want to fucking fight. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good welcome to you all, and welcome to Misfit Series X Double O A. And we are set to go with our first fight tonight. Four rounds, cruiserweight, and a catch weight 192 pounds. And first to make his way to the ring, from Los Angeles, California, here is James Sellers! his entire roundhouse, but what do you expect from him when the bell rings? Honestly, I think this is the type of guy that just wanted to come in here and test himself. And to me, someone that says, you know what, life's pretty good, let's go get punched in the face, that guy is gonna be a problem. <laughs> He's a big, burly character, but again, roundhouse, seven inch reach disadvantage. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing black with white, he weighed in officially 193 and one quarter pounds. Fighting out of and representing Los Angeles, California, here is James Sellers! And across the ring stands his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing solid black, he weighed in 189 pounds. Fighting out of San Antonio, Texas, he is the AK guy, Brendan Clearly, he's the crowd favorite. All right, fighters, you were giving your instructions in the dressing room. Protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves, come out fighting at the belt. This looks like Rocky versus Drago right now. We got the little guy versus the big man. Let's go Brandon chant happening right now. We are 
in Nashville, I assume they're Round cheering one. for the AK guy. Here we go. Cruiserweight division, 192 pound catch weight. AK guy wearing the black gloves. James Sellers in the white. Seven-inch reach advantage doesn't do you much good unless you can use it to your advantage. And right now, we need to see more jabs from James Sellers. Yeah, right now, both guys are taking big, big breaths, almost like they've been instructed to calm down. It's a long fight, four rounds. Here's a problem I'm seeing from the AK guy. When you're shorter, you got to move your head. you got to be able to slip that jab and counter. He's kind of moving his head. Sellers is doing a good job at keeping it in his range right there, just keeping him right at the end of it. Let's not forget, there's a lot of body there the AK guy can work with. Let's see some body shots to the bigger fight. That's a great point. Chop that tree down. Deep breaths, legs out, legs out, legs out, deep breaths. There you go. Breathe, breathe. Okay, deep breaths, give me another deep breath. Another deep breath. It looks like I'm gassed because I have bad cardio. It's actually the opposite. To be honest with you now, uh, during the first round corner, I was having a slight panic attack because I was over breathing during the first round. It's all the adrenaline, the nerves, the bright lights, the TV cameras. I was focused too heavy on my breathing and I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't get full breaths because I was, you know, hyperventilating essentially. So if it looks like I've got a fucking thousand yard stare here, it's because I'm having a little bit of a panic attack thinking I can't fucking breathe. But I love the fact that AK guys corner told him to calm down, take big breaths. I, I thought the go, round two. advice that he got was much better than the other corner. Yeah, absolutely, and that's what I'm talking about, right? They're, they're really kind of looking at this as the entire fight, not just round by round, and that's good to see. Now, Sellers is really getting his range here, though, and he seems really, really comfortable in there, and Brandon needs to kind of focus on breaking down the reach, you know, getting past that long guard, and he's not doing that right now. Nice body shot from Herrera there. He's trying to get inside. He's doing his best. There he is. Sellers here. You gotta let that fight go, baby. Oh, big right hand from Sellers fading away. You never know how you're gonna respond when you start tasting your own blood, and that's where James Sellers is at this moment. Roundhouse years ago, Grisham got super kicked by Shawn Michaels. That's when he realized what it's like. <laughs> full camp, which is at least eight weeks. Nice big left hook. You know, each of these guys keeps forgetting that lead hand. Go in there, remember. And here comes the AK guy. And right at the bell. That's it. Look, good second round. Second's out. Let's go. Second's out. And there's that jab, like you said, Roundhouse. The little guy can throw a jab, too. Mike Tyson was famous for having a good jab for a smaller fighter. But that seemed to really pump James Sailors up. And these have been very close rounds. Body shots, though, from the AK guy there. It's nice to see him mixing it up a little bit, which he wasn't really doing earlier, right? He, he was just targeting that right hand over and over again. He said now he's using all of his punches. Yeah, I think he's doing a really nice job as the fight continues and he gets more settled in. But now, Chris, we're going to start to see who has the legs that we've talked about. We're more than six minutes in now. Blood continues to pour out of the nose and mouth. A 
of James Sellers, but it hasn't slowed him down. Todd, I'll tell you one thing. We're in the third round, and by the looks of it in the first round, I did not expect that this fight would still be going the way it is. Slapping with his punches. Now they're just looking at each other. Okay, let's take a break. Let's take five, ten seconds. All right, now let's recommit. It's almost like they, they have an agreement yeah. after they do an exchange. They're like, hey man, uh, you want to get a quick cup, cup, cup of coffee and we'll be back here in a sec. Oh, nice job. Does your opponent see the punches? The punches you don't see that really hurt. Let's watch the finish again. It was a jab, but more than that was a, an accumulation of damage. Look at that, right on the button. And I think Sellers just lost his will to stand up. Yeah, it's pretty clear he did not want to get up. And whenever a fighter hits the ground after they've been counted out, like, uh, oh, man, I was almost going to get up, he wanted no part of that. Yeah. Watching Herrera dig deep like that when we were looking at him first round, we were saying, this guy looks tired. And then he digs deep and he gets a third round finish. Unreal. That was great. That was great to see. I love it when it just comes down to who wants it more, who's tougher, who's got the harder head. And that, that's that's boxing sometimes. Hey, but let's give credit to James Sellers. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes officially. Two minutes, 15 seconds of round number three. Referee Damian Walton reaches a count of 10 for your winner by way of knockout. The AK We're so new in this world, but if I'm AK guy and I look at this performance, I'm thinking to myself, maybe this is something I can actually do over and over and over, at least try it again. And after that, the entire gang went out on the town and proceeded to make up for six weeks of relative sobriety. I want to thank Keem and Misfits again for setting all this up. This was a really cool opportunity, and I really want to thank James for being an awesome opponent. James was not in bad shape before, but he said that he took like a couple boxing classes two years ago. So essentially, he had eight days to learn how to box. And while given that neither of us really had the technique down, because like I said, neither of us are boxers and we didn't really have the time to learn, I give him the utmost respect for being willing to jump in the ring and honestly saving my fight. Because we couldn't find an opponent for this, it would just get canceled and all that training and tickets and everything would be for nothing. Yeah, James was an awesome guy on and off camera and uh, you know, I look forward to inviting him out to a range day or something like that where we can actually hang out for the first time and not have to worry about the impending, you know, attempting to beat the shit out of each other. It makes social situations a, a little awkward when you got that hanging over your head. I also wanna give a huge shout out to my coaches, Matt and Tony. They were fucking awesome and really, really helped me go from uh, <laughs> no fucking clue what I was doing to somewhat of a fucking clue what I was doing. And also, of course, my friend Eli for putting in the time and really helping me go the extra mile and, and kind of really, he, he became very invested in this as well, which is why he was jumping up and down like a, a goddamn chimpanzee. And lastly, all, all the friends that helped with my training and came out to support me during the fight or just watched the fight from home. This was something wildly out of my comfort zone and I just appreciate all the help that, that you guys gave. So at the end of the day, this sounds wrong, but it's technically correct. And technically correct is the best kind of correct. Since this was regulated by the commission as a true pro boxing match, your boy technically has an undefeated 
pro boxing record by way of knockout. I will be able to tell my kids that with a straight face and not lie, and I will refuse to elaborate. Anyhow, I hope this was as cool of a side quest for you guys to follow along and watch as it was for me to experience. I really did enjoy this, and I'm in some of the best shape of my life, honestly. But I appreciate you guys following along and following me here on the B channel. Got a few more interesting things lined up for the future of this channel, so if you haven't already subscribed, I guarantee you, you're not going to want to miss what's coming up. Anyhow, I appreciate you guys watching all the way to the end, and I'll see you guys next time. They are saying my real name, right? Uh, Brand, you want Brandon Herrera, right? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll make sure to relay it. Perfect. Yeah, the, the AK guy was their channel name like six years ago. Sure, yeah, I'll make sure. No, that won't happen. Thanks, brother. Okay. AK guy. <laughs> like, God. Dang it, I don't no. do <laughs> I do more than that. <laughs> I do. Introducing the M16 man. It's not even my name. <laughs> fuck whoever that was. <laughs> you just walk out. I just like walk over and hit the announcer. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs>